Well, hi everybody, Father Alex here. Welcome to another episode of the Godcast. I am uh, the vicar of St Matthew's Church in Burnley. I'm the host of the Godcast, and I'm the author of this book, Our Daily Bread, from August to the Altar, which is available in all good bookshops and online. My guest today on the Godcast is Dame Andrea Jenkins. Andrea is a former member of Parliament for the Conservative Party. She's now a political uh, commentator, has been on various news outlets, and recently she appeared on Have I Got News For You. So I do very much hope you enjoy this interview now with uh, Andrea. And if you do, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel, perhaps follow me on X at Alex D. J. Frost. But for now, enjoy this interview with Dame Andrea Jenkins. Well, I'm delighted to say that to joining me on the Godcast this week is Dame Andrea Jenkins. Uh, Andrea is a former member of Parliament for the Conservative Party. She's a political commentator and uh, has recently been seen on TV uh, news and one one thing and another. Andrea, let's perhaps start there. How are you, first of all? I'm good, thank you, Alex. Let's just uh, just get this uh, Have I Got News uh, kind of news out of the way, really. Um, I was wondering how how you reflect on that experience. Were you bo- are you bothered by it? Are you still bothered by it? What's your feelings? Oh, what do you mean doing the show itself? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I loved it. Um, I mean, it's really gone. Seems to have, um a lot in the media about it. Um, but I mean, I did get booed the moment I walked on stage before I even opened my mouth. Which look, I've done question time before, and it does seem to attract you know, people with opposing political views. So I, I wasn't surprised at that. Um, but no, I mean, Ian Hislop was lovely behind the scenes. So mm. um, I, I think quite often public perception is very different. I mean, is is with myself than what people see behind the scenes. Of course, you're very experienced and uh, well-versed in kind of political criticism and whatnot. You know, you I suppose you knew what you were going in for. Yeah, absolutely. No, I mean, look, I'm I'm not a snowflake at all, and it's a, a satire program, isn't it? So, you know, and I I tried to give as good as I I got, but the thing is, it's three and a half hours recording, nearly three and a half hours down to twenty nine minutes. So, unfortunately, not necessarily all your good lines get put in there, which is no. a shame. But but they're not going to put everybody's in, are they? So. Yeah. So you definitely do it again, I'm sure. Yeah, if, if I got asked, that's the main question. <laughs> well, you, I, I think if you're good, good value for money, which you definitely were, I think there's every prospect of <laughs> you getting re- invited back, isn't there? Um, can I can I just turn to uh, the recent general election? Yeah, Andrea, just on a kind of, I've I've always wondered. I've never really asked. I've had lots of politicians on uh, the Godcast. You know, after a general election, when you have uh, given your heart and soul, you've sweated. Mm-hmm you know, blood, sweat and tears kind of thing for your constituency and for that to be taken away. Just just share with people what that yeah. that, that period is like, actually, if you would. Um, yeah, I mean, look, I'm, I'm pragmatic in life. Um, I believe whatever gets put in your path in life, you know, whatever God puts in your path, uh, you're meant to deal with. And I've dealt with some horrifics of personally my mum dying of sepsis while at the same time my my sister in a coma. So I think if you overcome stuff like this and you can overcome anything and I'm pragmatic. Yeah, I was sad because I loved helping people. It's a constituency of stuff I loved mostly. I mean, I had my jobs fairs, my health fairs, my pensioners fairs, helping people and cost of living fair. I, I organised lots of different events in those nine years. And but I mean, you yes, on the election night, I sort of got that feeling. We saw the results come through um, at 10 o'clock, the exit polls. And then I had an idea. Um, I never go to the count first because um, I don't know, I'm a little bit superstitious, really. I let my team sort of get a feel of how it's going so I can mentally prepare myself. And I got a call off my office manager, um, Will, who said, we've lost Andrea. So I just mentally prepared myself. I had my my sister, the one who recovered from being in a coma, and my best friend. And then I just put my big girl pants on and just made a as magnanimous speech as possible. And then then the next day, I'd updated my CV within 24 hours, Alex, and I was applying for jobs because, look, I'm divorced, um, single parent with a special needs child. I've got ADHD myself, and you cannot... Um, you've got to provide for your child. So um, the most important thing was 
you know applying for jobs then at that moment yeah and what do you miss most about about it now you've been out of that arena for a few months um it was to helping people i mean i never stopped helping people i've done lots in the charities um for charity before but um no, it was that aspect, really, and having that voice. I mean, when I saw that Labour was cutting the winter fuel allowance, I mean, I didn't want to step on the new MP's toes. Um, and that's why I stayed silent for the first couple of months. But when I saw that, I just felt it was so wrong, um, as, especially when money was going in different, um, like public sector pay rises, um, billions on the international stage on net zero. And I just thought we can't forget our pensioners. And I'd worked with lots of pensioners with my pensioners fairs over the years, and so I, the Age UK um, petition, I got a petition going in the constituency. I had a rally on my local high street. So that aspect, um, not having that same voice to stand up for people. I mean, I, I've still tried to make sure I've got a voice. That's why I've still been doing media since, um, because I want to make sure that people know that they can rely on me, even if I'm not a politician, to try and speak out. Yeah, did you think did you think the defeat um, would be as heavy as it was? Look, I mean, with my particular seat, um, it was similar in in most seats. Turnout was very low compared to the previous election. I mean, the Labour candidate got a thousand less votes than the twenty nineteen candidate, so they got less votes, um, and um, turnout was low. And but reform completely split my vote in half. So that's that's how I lost as well. And do you see a time where you you uh, put yourself back on the ballot paper? Um, I think it's too soon to say, Alex. Um, I mean, my main priority is, you know, looking after my little one, um, getting work, etc. And but it's about doing something I'm equally as passionate about. Um, I mean, I was very disappointed. I applied for a job with an animal charity. I've been an animal welfare campaigner for like 20 years. And I put my heart and soul into this. And um, that night before the interview, I was involved in a car accident. The taxi in London crashed. And so I was up till 6 a.m. in A&E um, with concussion. Mm. And I still went to the interview at 12, but um, gave a presentation, designed an advert for them. And I, they didn't even you know, have the courtesy to let me go through to the second stage when I didn't have concussion. So it's sort of like things like this. And what I'm finding, actually, Alex, is people misjudge who you are behind it. I mean, I had one particular interview where um, they, the recruitment agency said, oh, you're a bit marmite, aren't you? And I thought, oh, here we go. <laughs> so I think, you know, being quite strident and passionate can put some people off. So it's trying to find that role which will harness these passionate qualities, really. I do. I do think after interviewing numerous politicians and people can check check out people of all political persuasions on the Godcast that there is um, a real kind of I think a feeling amongst people that that, that politicians are, aren't or are immune from mm -hmm. real situations. And you've what well, we've been chatting for five ten minutes, and I can already hear you know the issues with um, single parenting, uh, children with educational needs uh, the the problems with your sister, you know, people forget <clears throat> that behind these uh, these personas, if that's the right word, are real people. And, um, you know, I, I guess resilience must be one of your key strengths, is it? Yes. And what I find, I mean, look, I've had over eight death threats over the years and I've got CCTV at my home. Um, you see behind me, I've got the screen switched off um, and people's pulled my fences down and things like this. And when you live alone with your child, um, it can be quite daunting. And there's just twice I've wanted to quit, actually, where um, I was sort of getting my head and for my niece's wedding the next day on my high street. And the police contacted me. Someone's looking to blow you up. Um, that and I was in the hairdressers for that moment thinking right can I run how can I make sure that the, the staff in the hairdressers are safe and then I got a really terrible email early this year where it was sexually explicit about me and my child being raped by Hamas and that moment I did actually think is it worth it Alex because you know I'm a, quite a tiger mum my my child is my life I adore him and so that was so really maybe it's fate why I um why I'm no longer um a politician. Yeah, I think um, I'm grateful you share that because I think people need to hear that as well. You know that um, and particularly after recent events over recent years where 
these have these uh, heinous crimes have become realities, haven't they? You know, and, and yeah. very yeah. Um, uh, just a just a final thing around the the Conservative Party. Really, we're left with two candidates now for leadership. Andrea, are you content with those two candidates? Would you have liked to seen something maybe a little bit more diverse or or something completely different? I mean, um, I was backing Pretty. Uh, Pretty's been a friend for years, and she's amazing. I mean, her birthday is the same day as my son's. She's a tiger mum as well. She never forgets his birthday. And she's a conviction politician. And to me, whatever anybody's political views, whichever wing of um, politics, I, I respect conviction politicians. And even those Remainers who, um, you know, gave me a hard time, if they stand up for what they believe in, that's fine. It's just when they get abusive, like Steve Bray did, that's why I stuck my finger up at Steve Bray outside Downing Street, because he's been hounding me for years with my, since my little one was in his pram with his big megaphone. And to me, you don't do that in front of a baby. So, um, so yeah, I think it, for me it was pretty because of conviction, really. I, w- I was going to mention the finger, <laughs> that yeah. finger of you. Yeah. But, um, because I, I, in, a, uh, in a little bit, I want to just talk about your the aspect of faith and how important that might be yeah. to you. I mean, regarding the finger moment, actually, Alex, I mean, the, the ironic thing is I don't even swear. And I don't use my fingers. Um, I, you know, I never use the V's or the middle finger. And um, my all my friends messaged me afterwards. What the heck's going on? You, <laughs> this isn't you, Andrea. And I think it was just the emotion intensity. People were booing Boris outside. There was Steve Bray there blasting out his "Bye Bye Boris" song. And I thought, look, you've got what you want now. Just just let him make his goodbye speech. Mm. And it was aimed at Steve Bray, as I said, who'd been hounding me for years, every week for years since my little one was in his pram. And and it was just me saying. Enough is enough, Randy. Yeah, I, I was quite endeared by it, if I'm being honest, Andrea, because <laughs> maybe it's a northern thing, is it, Alex? <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe it could be, but you know, I, I was I was talking to my congregation about the other day. I was preaching about, uh, you know, have you ever put your foot in it? And goodness me, I do it almost on a daily basis. Yeah, and I think uh, I think it's good sometimes to see the kind of the uh, the reality and the humanity of people in certain situations. Quite often. Uh, the real conversations on my podcast are when the microphone switched off and people really, yes, absolutely. you know, let their hair down and tell you some of the things that, that perhaps they don't want other people. I mean, do. I think as well, I've got ADHD, so I am very impulsive. So I do think, you know, when I'm on TV or something, um, that does come out at times. I think it adds to my um, outspoken nature, I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah. And and Andrew, what was the, what was the driving force before uh, behind your kind of call into politics? Yeah. So can you, I, I remember as a kid, I'm not sure how old you are, but I remember the miners' strike and recently been watching um, Sherwood about uh, connected stories to the miners' strike. Mm. It really captured my ma- imagination as a young guy. But mm. what about yourself? Where was the kind of the? So root- I'm 50, so we was probably during the same era, Alex. Um, are you an 80s pop star fan as well? Absolutely. I yeah. my down ballets and stuff like this, yeah. This is the Pesh Mode here. These are my heroes. Oh, I love your Pesh Mode. <laughs> so, <laughs> Joy the Silence is the one my favourite. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, for me, um, look, normal working class background. Um, I went to university as a mature student. I actually went straight into work at Greg's Bakery as a Saturday kid at 16. and But my dad used to say, um, really... It doesn't matter where you come from in life. It's what you do in life that matters. And I ended up becoming um, retail manager, area manager um, in charge of um, about 40 branches, lots lots of team members. And then I, um, my dad was also a madcap inventor and he was over in Pakistan um, seeing about potentially manufacturing there. And he gave President Musharraf my CD of songs and 2004, I ended up flying out there as a store manager of Comet to to perform out there for the Independence Day. So it's been quite eclectic, my career. And then I set my own record label up. I became a music teacher in schools. But so politics just didn't even figure. I used to vote. I mean, the first time I voted, I voted for Blair. <laughs> um, even though we're, we're naturally conservative as a family, it seems something new and different. Um, I've voted conservative after that first 97 election. But um, and my calling actually as you say about the calling was I lost my dad in 2011 and I don't have any political heroes my dad was my hero he came from a really difficult background quite a poor background you know all their siblings all shared one little room etc 
And um, when he died, the light sort of went out of my life. Um, and, you know, he was very um, believed in faith and Christian as well, as I was brought up. And um, so what mum and I did, I mean, I, I felt even those difficult moments, I thought I'm very lucky because for 38 years, I had an amazing dad. Some people are not that lucky. So mum and I challenged channeled it into joining a charity as a trustee um, and then it's through that I thought if you want to change healthcare policy because literally training doctors practice on my dad for two and a half hours on a routine 10 minute operation and he caught MRSA and died the hospital room was filthy it was all very unexpected mm -hmm. and then I campaigned for compassionate healthcare, and that's how I sort of fell into politics really I've, I've seen myself more of an accidental politician in a way. Gosh Andrea, just listening to you, I see some of the similarities. I, I, I could plug my book, August to the Altar, working in retail for 20 years. And, oh, wow. Uh, and also um, my dad being my inspiration, who I, who I lost to dementia a few years back. Oh, wow. But, you know, and, and also your your comments about, you know, uh, compassionate care as well. Uh, I, I've spoken quite publicly about a need for compassionate care. Um one of the things, I mean, I enjoy, very much enjoy the political commentary platforms. I don't have any loyalty to anyone. I, I find one that, I switch one that's interesting, whether it's talk radio, whether it's GB News, yeah. whether it, whatever. But but I, I do think it's set up for kind of argument, isn't it? It's set up yeah. for me against you, you against me. Um, and, and it's normally about policy. It's not all really about uh, particular situations, you know. And we, we're yeah. dealing with um, just recently, Andrew, we're dealing with a real crisis, I think, in Burnley, but around ketamine use in young people. Yes, I've heard stuff like that. Actually, you know, yeah. and and this is what I want to be talked about on yeah. TV news because um, in recent days I've had some appalling accounts from mums of teenage kids that are hooked on ketamine. What what do you Terrible. think it is about uh, the news platforms that they 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 like that? Uh, me against you kind of mm. pulls are on and let's talk about ketamine abuse let's talk about drugs yeah. for, for half an hour an hour what is it do you think I, I agree with you it's, it all seems to be got you moments doesn't it really and but parliament is set up in an adversarial way isn't it the chamber is um so I think naturally you get people with opposing views and um and I mean I've worked with you know labor on animal welfare stuff so to me it's about the issue as well um, but no, I mean, media, it, it would be lovely to see some more um, positive news stories because they don't always make the news, do they really either? And I think that, as my dad used to say, it's, it's good to have that candle of hope in life. No wonder people are so depressed. We, we need positivity in there as well. And maybe I've added to it by being so strident on things, but we we do need more positivity and and as I said, I mean, when I've been in media myself, um, especially when I've done the BBC, not just this recent thing, there's been too many gotcha moments. And the, you're talking over you so you don't get to the real nub of the story, which which matters. And, and I think that's a shame, really. Yeah, maybe it's this need for 24-hour news. I'm yeah, not sure it could what. be. Yeah. And just returning to the political career. So you said you voted for Tony Blair. What what, uh, what led you down the Conservative well, I mean, my... way, particularly, Andrew, because you say from a working class background, yeah. I'm from Burnley, very working class, not historically attributed to the Conservative Party. It was uh, during the Brexit vote, but has returned to mm. to Labour control. What's What was your thinking behind that? Yeah, I mean, mum and dad were Conservative. My, my older sister, Conservative, she was an activist way before I ever was. Uh, she's been a mayor as well. Um, but... No, I mean, for me, it was, Blair was just, I mean, gosh, what was we, 21 or something, 2021 20, in 97? And um, Blair was something different, wasn't he? He was a great communicator, hence why I voted for him. And, but no, I mean, naturally, I'm a conservative with a small C to me. I'm, it's, I'm very traditional. Um, and I'm, I'm also, it's about family. I'm against the assisted dying. I, I think that that should actually, you know, God should decide. Um, I've got quite strong views on abortion as well. I think we're far too liberal with our abortion laws. And um, so 
and it's about pro business as well alex because businesses they you know actually keep the economy going they um help lift people out of poverty they provide employment so i, I think naturally i'm a conservative but back to your early question which you said you're gone to faith has always been a big driver for me and my family growing up as well yeah and, and again chatting to politicians there is quite a strong community of christians in westminster aren't there and i know that there is um a daily eucharist i think uh before yeah. um how does that how has that and how does that influence your your kind of daily life how how important well, is it to you well, I mean, if I can just tell you a bit about my upbringing, my mum and dad was amazing. Mum was not necessarily, um, a, not she was a Christian, but, you know, not somebody who's over there and practising. But my dad, I mean, I remember growing up, I mean, I'm the youngest of um, three siblings. Um, there's like nine years and then nearly 11 years between me and the oldest one. And I remember growing up and dad used to talk and mum and dad, we used to talk about things such as, you know, do that other beings exist in in the universe about different planets we talk about different religions my dad um even read the quran in english um he we, we yeah we spoke about judaism we've um been to shabbat um our, ourselves took shabbat on a um on a friday together dad and i did so we've always had that kind of belief and dad used to always say on his business cards my late dad um, it used to say, use God as your steering wheel, not your spare wheel. And um, no God, no peace, um, as in no, no, as in no. And then K-N-O-W, no God, and you'll know peace. So uh, we've sort of brought up with that. And if anything, I think my siblings and I, it's given us resilience that whatever's put in your path, like I said earlier on, you know, it's looking at what can you learn from this? How can you be that better person and how can you, you grow? And my my seven-year-old son, you know, especially because we lost my mum, we lost his his little dog, um, you know, when it, um, in the last couple of years. And he's had to understand that. So talking about heaven, et cetera, and he talks to Nana, Nana, um, I'm thinking of you. And I'm trying to foster that really, really sort of belief in a way and I think it helps with the healing process and he also prays as well I get him praying um and we don't go to church you know every week it might be once um every six weeks and because of his ADHD he finds it hard to sit down so he goes in the in the play area but but no it's very much a, a part of my family life in a way I yeah it's fascinating to hear you talk about it I, I'm, I'm really intrigued by in America with the with their election coming, that that you know God is on the agenda quite frequently, um, but here it, it seems to be an unwritten rule that we don't talk about it in in politics. Um, but that's sad, don't you think? Because to me, look, there's so much mental health problems around, and I think if people had faith in whatever religion, it, it can it it can be a way to get that inner peace and try to understand the workings of life and the challenges really. And I think I think that's a shame. I think politicians should be. Um, able to talk about and this is one reason actually Alex that um, when you emailed me so thank you for that um, I wanted to come on your podcast so it was an honour to come on. Oh thank you thank you that's very kind but and and um, yeah I agree with you it should be on the agenda I, I didn't I didn't uh, vote for any political party and when people ask me it's because I don't feel anybody truly represents me as a Christian yeah, no, I, I do believe there's a. It's not just a your way or my way. I think there's another way, and and for me that is uh, is the Christian way. And I don't think people should be ashamed to talk about that and be given and an also, opportunity to explain what that means. To explain yeah, what I, that means, you know. I, I agree, and also I get quite frustrated that um, you know that it feels like Christianity is being cancelled sometimes in our country, and you know we see councils not celebrating Christmas and they're calling it a different name and mm. and that's really sad we wouldn't do that with other religions Alex and I get so frustrated over it yeah absolutely you know and and um I, I think uh, the sooner uh, the Christian topic is allowed to be uh received you know intelligently you know because I, I think uh I think also my criticism of media is they go to we go to the extremes, don't we? So we go yeah. to the, you know, there are certain people I won't name them. They have been on the Godcast who are the people of faith, but are of the extreme, and and I don't think yeah. that's always helpful. I think it's no. uh, to have a sensible, moderate conversation is really important. So I'm really grateful for you sharing your 
your uh, religious um, kind of uh, connections and what it means to you. And I think it's important for people to hear that as well. Just um, just mindful of, of time, Andrea. I'm just thinking yeah. about some of the hot potatoes that are going on in the political world at the minute. Obviously, we've got the new the new government, and we and yes. farmers just don't have celebrated is the right word, but he's had a hundred days and a few mm. extra. Um, do you think he, he, he's? Um, uh, well, I think uh, to be honest, Andrea, the question I want to ask you is: Do you think Nigel Farage could be the next prime minister of the country? I mean, I think that. Stranger things have happened, haven't they? <laughs> I mean, look at politics since just before Brexit. You know, it's um, I think one thing's for certain is the uncertainty of politics. And so I'd, I'd say don't rule it out. I mean, I think people are getting by as remorse with Labour. And the my email address is still open until the 4th of um 4th of November, and I've had so many emails, Alex, of people saying they wish they hadn't voted for them, they're disappointed in so many different areas, and the hypocrisy over the slee stuff, you can't do as I say, but not as I do. Mm. And so I think, I, I think I'd think i be surprised if they win the election, uh, the next election. However, if to me, if the Conservatives and Reform can't work together in some way, they will win the, the election, because we've seen with smaller parties, it's quite... Um, electorally difficult to form a majority government. So I think that they're going to have to work together if we want to sort of ensure we don't have a socialist government. Yeah. Uh, and and just on the issue in the Middle East, Andrew, I've been very, feel very blessed to have been uh, twice on pilgrimage to the Holy Land. It, it, it's a very I've been as well, yeah. It's a very important place for me. And, yes. and by going, my bishop said to you, it will change your outlook on life forever. And, mm. and it really has. And I'm desperately sad to see what's happening there. And I, I don't really see much end in sight. And you have people with Palestinian flags. You've got people with mm. Israel flags. I kind of want to have a flag of Israel and a, and a flag of Palestine. It's, it's the hatred there, what I find, and the disrespect in Britain, actually, when it was the anniversary of those abhorrent murders of the Israeli people. And they just, the pro Palestinian lobby decided to have a march on that same day. And, um, yeah, and and the anti-Semitism. That's what that's what I find really difficult. Alex. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you, thank you for coming, Andrea. It's been it's been lovely chatting to you. What's uh, thank you as well. Thank what's you. the future? You got some more news shows coming up? And yeah, I mean, I've I've always got GB News bits coming up here and there, and I do Jeremy Vine once a month, and um, yeah. So let let's see what comes up, really. Yeah. Well, I'm going to plug my book, Andrea. As you're an ex retailer, Brilliant. there it is. August to the altar, our daily bread. Well, I'm going to have to buy that from a retailer to a different route. Well, it's for, Is it on Amazon? It's on Amazon. It's published by HarperCollins North. It's uh, forwarded by Alistair Campbell, of all people. Oh, brilliant. He famously came on the Godcast and said, I don't do God, but I do the Godcast. So, uh, oh, wonderful. Give me a great strap line. So, Andrea, thank you so much. Thank you very much. I wish you well, and uh, we send love to Burnley to you wherever you are. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure talking to you. All the best, and good luck with the book. <laughs>